Welcome everybody to our Four Horsemen of the Investing Apocalypse final segment. Again, we've been looking at the four things that keep investors from reaching their financial goals outside of personal finance issues. We've looked at how we all react to losing money the same way that we do mortal danger and the emotional condition that that can create and how to get through that. We've looked at life and how it obviously acts in unexpected ways and the need to both plan as well as design portfolios that can be ready for the unexpected. And finally, uh, last week we looked at the media and again, how they may not always have your best interests at heart when they create their various headlines and news stories. This week we're gonna look at markets, uh, recap really how they act in unexpected ways as well, and then look at kind of the two main things that we want to help drive uh, our focus with respect to overcoming that obstacle, which is that of expectations. So this year's obviously gotten off to a much rockier start than anything we saw last year. Last year, we only had eight trading days where the markets were up or down more than 1%. The typical year has 40. And so for a lot of investors, I'm sure it feels like that person who's been soaking in the nice hot tub um, and, and enjoying that warmth and then diving into a pool. It isn't that the pool's that cold. It's not that markets are that bad. It's just what we were coming from was unusually nice. And so that again is an important thing to keep in mind. From a historic perspective, you might, you might remember that stat that we shared in the first week, which is that the typical market, kind of that average return of eight to 10%, only happens 10% of the time, literally in the last 90 years, nine years out of 90. An extreme market, one that's gonna play to your fear or greed, again, neither of those are constructive to your long-term success, it happens almost 45% of the time. So the cards are really stacked against investors' expectations in terms of what markets are gonna bear over a short period of time compared to what investors uh, um, are expecting. We get quite often, you know, design my portfolio to beat the S&P 500. And, and that's actually not as difficult as people might expect. Uh, you could simply buy the Russell 2000 index and that would in fact beat the S&P 500 more times than not. The problem is most investors, the vast majority, if not all investors, need to design a portfolio, not just to keep up, certainly not even to beat the S&P 500, but really for their lives and their story. And that needs to reflect two big things. And again, they're really the two big obstacles that can keep people from achieving really any type of long-term great return. If we look at a quick chart of the market over the last 118 years, I would simply just show, if you look at this gray line, that again, it's pretty hard to find two points of any reasonable length of time where you didn't get a positive return. And so our entire focus is really, how can we keep investors in the game long enough to make the types of returns, hit those long-term historic averages that they hope to see. And there's really two things. The first is dealing with the emotional side of investing. And there's nothing wrong to admitting or just embracing that emotions and emotional volatility is certainly a part of being an investor. If you think back to that Russell 2000 example, in 2008 and nine, as bad as the market was, it was considerably worse. In fact, almost 50% further decline than the S&P 500, down at one point over 60%. This can be really hard for most investors emotionally to hang on with that type of volatility, not to mention all the other moments along the way. The second one is again, forced selling, being forced to get out of a position before you can get to that higher point and achieve that long-term return. And so to that end, we really need to focus on income generation and helping people design a portfolio that's gonna be there for those unexpected events and, and or produce the level of income they need on an ongoing basis to be able to stay in the market, hang on to those shares of whatever they're holding on to, to allow that long-term value to be realized. We like to use the acronym when we're thinking around portfolios with clients around here, LIVE, building a portfolio we can live with. And really we were gonna look at four key things. We'll touch on some of these in future video series, but one is liquidity. How easily can we get in and out of this position? Number two is income. And are we generating enough income stream to help our clients with both their ongoing and or unexpected needs? Volatility, have we designed a portfolio that will not exceed that person's emotional ability to deal with a certain level of volatility? And for expected return, that we can get that long-term expected return that an investor is expecting. And that's really the process that people need to focus on far more 
than needing to think that in a given year they should get a certain expected rate of return. With that, we're going to wrap up this week's commentary. We're going to wrap up this series. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And uh, we'll look forward to tackling some new subjects in the weeks ahead. Thanks so much.